So suppose we take a rectangular cross section of sides B and H. So the area would be B times H and the area moment would be BH cubed by 12 from strength of materials information which is also summarized in table 9.2. So we know that the shape efficiency factor is the ratio of the stiffness for this geometry by the stiffness for a square cross section and so it's 12 times i divided by a square so now if you take the value for i and you take the value for a square which is the square of this term over here what do you get and that's the derivation for the shape efficiency factor so as it turns out when you do the math so you insert terms for i in this equation and a in this equation you will see that for a rectangular cross section the shape efficiency factor is h divided by b what happens when b equals to h this drops over to one right which is basically the reference shape efficiency factor so square cross section has a shape efficiency factor of 1 and everything else changes according to the deviation from the square cross section. Let's take the case of a circular cross section, another common shape. So let's say that the radius is r, so the area is pi r square. The moment i can be represented as pi by 4 times r to the power 4 the units remain m to the power 4 and so again in reference to the rectangular cross-sectional area the shape efficiency factor is 12 times i divided by a square and so if you introduce i into this equation over here and a square as a square of the term over here what do you get so what we see is all this drops out to 3 divided by pi which is almost 1 pi being 3.14 so that's the shape efficiency factor for a circular cross section relative to a square cross section and it's a constant it really doesn't it just depends on the geometry it doesn't depend upon the radius though suppose you take a tubular cross section instead right? so it's a hollow circle Let's say that the thickness of the tube is T and the outer radius is R0 and the inner radius is Ri. So the, the area can be de determined by just cutting this open and spreading it out if it's ductile to a rectangular cross section of one side length T and an overall length of 2 pi r, which is circumference. If you can neglect the difference between the radii. So 2 pi r times t is the area. In a similar manner as, a, as an approximation, when t is very small, this area moment reduces to pi r cubed times t. So now we have a way to be able to, for this situation, look at shape efficiency factor as the stiffness for this geometry relative to the stiffness of the cross sectional area with a square cross section so for the same material e falls apart and then you have 12 i by a square you introduce i into the numerator a into the denominator and what do you get so for the tubular cross section what you get is 3 by pi times r divided by t provided that r is the radius is very much bigger than the thickness of the tube as one approximation so this was when it was a completely circular cross section it was just this region over here right 3 to over 5 just that term tubular cross section to a rectangular box cross section We've seen the solid rectangular cross section before, so what about a hollow rectangle? 
So again, in a similar manner, the area can be determined by if you snip this across, you have t times 2b plus 2h. And so the area becomes 2t times h plus b, provided that the sides of the rectangle are way higher than the thickness of this cross section. And for that situation, the area moment, as you will see in uh, table 9.2, it reduces to this term. And so in a similar manner, the shape efficiency factor for this rectangular box cross section can be determined by 12 times i divided by a square. You have i over here. You have a over here. Introduce these terms and determine for yourself that for the condition where the sides of the rectangular box are way bigger than the thickness t, you have a shape efficiency factor that determines on h, b, and t the different geometrical attributes. So what happens when h equals to b to this term over here, right? You have 4 in the numerator, you have 2 squared, which is 4, this drops off, and so you just have h divided by 2t, right, for a square cross section. What about an I beam, which we come across quite regularly? So thickness at the top of the I and, and the bottom of the I is T. The width across these two regions is 2T. The height is H and this is B. 2T times H plus B. One way to see why is this similar to a hollow rectangular box is that you can basically take a thickness t over here and move it to either side towards the end and you'll get the same area correct and similarly you'll have the same situation for the moment of inertia as well and then the shape efficiency factor should be identical to what you had for the rectangular box how do we use these shape efficiency factors now for material selection? Let's look at that familiar plot of Young's modulus versus density, E rho plots. Right? And you have these various material families from forms to natural materials, different kinds of polymers and elastomers, um, ceramics over here, different composites, and then the metals family in the orange. Right? Suppose we put a line of slope 2 and we say that based on the constraints this is the demarcation between eliminating all the candidates below the line and looking at only options over here. This plot works and in this case aluminum would be below the this line option and so would be eliminated for, cons uh, for consideration. The way we use shape factors is the sh by changing the shape, the efficiency of the structure changes. And for instance, if you go to the extreme limit of for aluminum, where the maximum shape efficiency factor is 44, right? you go from 1, which is what is in the plots that we have taken a look at until now in this course, you will see that you can bring the same material that was eliminated from consideration into the running again by moving it to a different shape. How do we get there? 